Now it's okay. time to introduce the uh, next speaker, uh, Dr. Manal Shahad. Her presentation titled Understanding Islam Communities and Their Heritage, a participatory approach to counter uh, urban development deficiencies. Uh, Manal is Associate Professor of Urban Planning and Design of Ain Shams University, and she is uh, author for many papers, and she has a lot of activities in urban planning and heritage uh, uh, community heritage uh, in, in, in Egypt and in Germany as well. Manal, mic is yours. Hello and good afternoon. This is Manal El Shahat, associate Your professor sound now? at Shams University, yes. faculty yes. of engineering in Cairo, and I'm working between University of Stuttgart in Germany, where I'm based, and in and Cairo. In the following minutes, if you can make like it loudly, the results of the research. This is the maximum research, I have. Which is a cooperation Sorry. between Stuttgart and Cairo on the topic of slum upgrading. This research project was integrated into the, into the teaching curricula so that the results from the academic research and teaching activities were combined along 10 years of experience. The focus of this presentation will be on the topic of slums communities, heritage, and cultures. Slums communities are recognized and mar as marginalized and polarized communities. We will explore together in the following the tangible and intangible cultural features within such communities. We follow in an ESBIT project, a participatory approach to counter urban development deficiencies. I would like to start with my lovely picture or photo which I took in 2011 directly after the revolution, when I started with the, the project ideas. Hanin, in the picture, accompanied me in the visit to uh, Esbit Abu Khan, and she tried to show me her neighborhood from different perspectives. Let's go through different theoretical background that are related to our topic and the cases of slums. I would like to start with asking if slums and slum communities can be recognized as a heritage. Going through the different definitions of community heritage, community heritage encompasses a wide range of heritage-based perspectives and activities developed and run by communities themselves. It refers also to sites, themes, and practices of societies that are old, important, and worthy of conservation. But here, important and worthy are dimensions that cannot be defined everywhere uh, and by everyone the same. Another topic to review is slum upgrading. Here are some guiding questions. What are slums? What is slum upgrading? And what is the difference between urban upgrading and slum upgrading? And also important to review the, in the different strategies and policies for upgrading within an attempt to redefine and reformulate their framework. Most of the strategies for urban development are built on the negative image of informal settlements that always present them as a problem and highlighting mainly what they lack instead of, uh, of looking for their potential and opportunities for cultural and community development. We all know that slums are areas that lack of basic municipal services, and in most of the cases, they don't have access to education, health, and other public services. They are unrecognized and unserved. They are also a significant economic force, with almost 60% of employment in the informal sector. But a fact is that most of the uh, one of the third of one third of the population uh, all over the developing world are living in slums. They are increasing, although all what government strives to uh, do to tackle these issues. Slum upgrading is about an integrated approach to turn around downwards trends in an area to create a dynamic in the community. This differs from urban upgrading, where slums upgrading is about investing in citizens.
Cities Alliance defined 10 principles towards reformulating the conventional strategies by governments into a real upgrading policies where slums are recognized as important and being accepted. Partnership and partners are being mobilized. Understanding slums communities and their heritage and cultures is essential as potential and resources for development. Investing in communities and social infrastructure is also defined towards a framework of development. So let's go through the SBIT project. The SBIT project is an academic research project and it developed a participatory approach that counter urban development deficiencies. Three main pillars for development are framing the whole activities and projects towards citizen control and uh, real participation. These three pillars are education, profession, and health. Our vision is formulated based on this understanding where improving life together with a place is the main focus of ESBIT work. Our mission is about not only upgrading the urban, but also working on the potential of the social fabric as well. Respecting logic, culture, and identity are the drivers of the whole, the entire process. Here are some slides showing the project, its story timeline, and how we engage different actors and stakeholders step by step along the process. This is our structure and approaches. Five working packages are designed to, eat, to reach the best results towards the local community. Participatory workshops and activities are important part of the ISBIT work. Here you can see how we develop the work together with students and the community members. Our timeline of work shows the continuous and direct contact with the local community in order to understand deeply the context. Also understanding the logic behind how they develop and form their physical and social fabric. Esbit Abulkarn is the first area which we investly worked in. The area is located in, uh, um, uh, behind Amram al As Mosque, which is the first mosque in Africa ever, and in Egypt. It expands till Salah Salim Street in the north. We try to cover with our activities the whole area, with either like uh, projects, workshops, and or interventions. This gives us access to all community members and also give us, gave us the chance to explore similarities and differences between the different groups of people and identify their cultures. I'm going to present more in deep the street intervention as an example how we identify the cultural features and communities heritage. Of course, the financial limitations of the project limit our case to a small scale project. In the street intervention, we redefined the street in terms of its function and features. We studied the interrelationship between streets and culture and social activities. Streets in the theory are defined as spaces that support unlimited culture, economic, political, and social activities. They are also defined as the social center of cities and towns. In informal settlement context, they are defined in terms of their function, where they are the only public space available there. We as Esbit project define the street in Esbit Abu Karn as in many other slums in Egypt as a semi-private, a semi-public space where, peop where people share their daily life together. A neighborhood is a big family house where streets are recognized as the living room and spaces for people to meet, chat, cook, enjoy their free time and exchange their problems or goods. 
This slide show, uh, shows the housing typology within the area and its elements by observing the street as part of the housing unit. Indoor spaces and outdoor spaces are merged in these cases. Doors and walls are not blocking such relationship between the out and in. This is a timeline of the daily life routine, a daily routine of a family in Esbetabukan. We try to document here all types of use of the outdoor space by the family's members from women, children, youth, and men. Space, spaces and street furniture are continuously changing along the day based on who is using the space and when and in which form. Our objectives with the street interventions were, among others, exploring the architectural and urban features of the space, recognizing the values and qualities in their communities' cultures to preserve as an asset, and also readdressing the urban experience to match that of the old Islamic Cairo. In terms of the process, the process is a play role between the local communities and academia as a main part of ESBIT project, moving together from interdisciplinary work into transdisciplinary participatory work on site. Here you can see how we uh, designed the project in our academic course, participatory needs assessment course, and how we estimated the time. And of course, our estimated timeline when we started planning for the project was not matching to the reality and not responding to the essential part of the process, which is including, which includes uh, the community and the participatory activities. Here also you can see how we try to release ourselves from the area by the end of the project and hand over the whole process to the local residents and raise their ownership sense of the place and the intervention. And we continued only our work by following up and evaluation and monitoring the whole project results and uh, process. Back to theories, uh, we uh, checked where ESBIT project is locating on the ladder of participation by Einstein. And we can identify or recognize our work uh, uh, on the level of partnership based on a bottom-up approach towards citizen control. Our participatory approach can be defined also as a genuine participation, where we can easily say it in another words, like we are playing with the community ping pong instead of squash. Sharing resources, time, and power is the main approach towards collaboration, a real collaboration, and towards handing over the whole process to the citizen and uh, giving them like uh, the control. The state intervention on site is uh, bringing like such theories into practice. And uh, it was based on and designed based on three main steps. The first step is the site selection or preparation for the implementation. It includes defining different criteria for the selection based on uh, group discussion and community discussion, selecting five locations and going with uh, the criteria uh, through the different sites to uh, define and like um, decide for one of the locations. Part of the criteria was like um, the community uh, approaches and approval, but also the use of the space and how the area is configured, uh, the sur surrounding activities and traffic flow. Finally, one of the sites was selected by the, um, the community together with the academic. Uh, the second step uh, included site analysis, exploring the architectural and urban features of the space, but also understanding the social context and the use of the space. We defined this uh, step uh, by doing analysis and studying the different street furniture 
and street elements which we are going to upgrade and work on studying also the existing architectural vocabulary around the site the third step is the on-site work dealing with the technical details and challenges such as for example sewage Another challenge on site which we confronted with, uh, for example, some uh, items on the streets and like uh, part of the street furniture, for example, here the chicken coop, which has a function and orientation for the community. But for us as external, we recognized it as uh, like an element blocking the street flow. Uh, dealing with materials as resources by learning from the locals, recycling concepts and details. We tried uh, with this to employ this in a professional way. Examples are employing the pottery into the archite architectural units that serve as a function for ventilation, but also for biodiversity, for example, as a vision uh, for feeding the vision. Like integrating also local vocabulary into uh, architectural elements. For example, here the street pattern was designed based on uh, like using uh, rest tiles from uh, a nearby site construction and uh, like integrating this uh, uh, pattern of the Islamic window in the mosque, in the street plastering design. Other examples on site uh, were how to integrate uh, like different local uh, materials from the surrounding and re-enhancing, for example, the chicken coop in an architectural way. Integrating children and children participation was part of the whole process. Children, for example, here, they collected from the streets the different, um, like, uh, caps from, uh, like, drinks. And they started to use it as a mosaic to make uh, designs for the walls, drawing some uh, nice drawings from their imaginations. Part of the site or on-site work was integrating all community members as a human resources. All in all, the project costs were reduced to almost one third through participation and the use of the local and uh, rest materials from the surrounding, but also uh, like employing the local skills. The project received in 2017 a honorable mention from uh, Live Projects Network and Seed Awards for its participatory process and uh, for the upgrading concept of the urban space uh, of slums. A follow-up visit, for example, here in October 2019, is showing how the, uh, like the locus changed in the different um, street elements and street furniture. Uh, for like, uh, This is uh, part of the Honorable Mansion that was presented in USA. Yeah, these are our street builders from the community, not all of them. Yeah, these are our street builders from the community, not all of them, but part of the community members who were participating in the whole project, but also from the academics. Finally, uh, this was our experience with such marginalized communities. It was a great practice for theories on the ground, a real understanding of the gap between theory and practice, and furthermore, recognizing the gap between the urban development of traditional approaches and strategies and the real slum upgrading. 
the tangible and intangible features that we explored along the entire process can be a foundation for adequate urban and slum upgrading strategies. Accepting and acknowledging these communities and their culture, identity, identity and logic as a heritage is a key aspect towards both urban development control but also citizen control. Thank you for your attention.